three, two, one. Welcome back, everybody, to the Weapons of Mass Discussion podcast with the Ministry of Defense, LLC. I'm Glenn Snyder, back again with Dr. Corbett Everidge. Hope everybody out there is doing well, taking care of themselves. How are you doing, my friend? Alive and kicking. Uh, the running going good, the healing, getting back into, back into shape, back into business? If anybody's ever had a hernia surgery, they're going to know what I'm about to say. It's, the, it's almost li- like living in a parallel universe. I ran 10 miles the other day, but I can't pick up over 30 pounds. <laughs> now, he, they, they have no problem with me running a half marathon. Right. But I can't pick up a, you know, a bucket of cat litter. Well, that's yeah. probably a good thing. Well, you know, well, it, it, <laughs> but it's just. Honey, can you get the cat litter? Uh, exactly. You know, when you, have, when you have three cats in the house like I do, you know, that, that is a, that's a, yeah. something that happens quite often, but it's just. You know, I'm I'm working on kata and a lot of that, and uh, but there's just a lot of things you still can't do. I'm, I think I've got uh, three weeks from this coming Monday, and I'll be fully released. Nice. Uh, it's odd because you know you got a foreign object inside of you now. Mm. Uh, I'm not a I'm a PhD, not an MD, but I, if I ever had it to do over again, I'd just say just stitch it up instead of putting that mesh in, inside of me. But yeah, well, there's certain ways you can turn. You're like. Feel it. That's huh? not supposed to be there. Mm. But uh, well, what you been up to? And getting that run, getting ready for that half marathon. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's, I mean, I'm not a runner. I run to support I my martial arts. Now, <laughs> I run, but I'm not a runner. <laughs> I, I'm more of a trotter. Uh, but no, we did. We we did eight and a half miles on the big hills on Sunday, and it was uh, it was enlightening to say the least. If if you want to find out how good a shape you're not in, run a hill. Oh yeah, I, I, I tell you what. The, Total honesty, what I hate more than the uphill is a really steep yeah, downhill. Downhill, because it kills my knees and my hips. All that pounding. Oh, I don't sound that cross country runners and stuff like that. Oh yeah, uh, trail just, runs. Oh yeah, yeah, that's that's you know the backside of hell. Yeah, but you know, I remember when when, when my son um, ran cross country. The coach used to say that you know, what his kids came and do was all other teams' punishment. You know, so it is. It's punishment. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> and I ran cross country in high school. You know, just to get in shape for for sports. It's just, but you yeah. know, you, you start running through rocks and jumping creeks. Yeah, it's yeah. But yeah, I like it. But uh, like I say, I run to support all my other stuff, my martial arts and stuff. But other than that, you know, and, and for overall health, overall health, I don't plan on being some kind of a true competitor. I go out there and I I participate, but uh, and do what I need to do, but it, it's fun. But uh, I tell you what, uh, everybody, today we've got a little uh, – the topic of conversation today is, is directly affects everybody. But, uh, and this is really not martial arts related. It, t- it can tie into that, but it, it affects every single one of us every day, and that's privacy and security. And understanding that – you know what you know, the difference between privacy and security – you know, uh, a, a good way of looking at it is uh, using a window. Maybe use a window as a as an example. You know, you put curtains over that, you have privacy. But unless you put bars on it, it's not secure. You know, there's two different things. Your know, privacy is a way of, 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 of keeping things away from others, but security is a way of keeping you safe from others. And I, I don't think people in our world today take that as serious as they should. There's a lot of false sense of security, and we've had this conversation many times, you know, when we talk about home security systems. You know, how many times have we had to – you go point out every flaw in the, in the, in the home security system that, that hasn't gotten covered and that sort of thing, and, it, and it, that's very enlightening. You know, when you think you've got something covered, but you really don't. So – you know, it's uh, don't get me started on the home security business. We'll be here for four hours tonight, and I'm sure I, everybody out there don't I, want to listen to me for four I, I, hours. I'm trying to push it out there, yeah, it's but you know, it's something that affects us all, you know, not just from a physical standpoint, and you know, from from you know, security, you know, your well being if somebody's trying to hurt you, grab you, do something to you, get in your home, get in your car, um, but security from, from being online, you know, my god, everything's connected, and everybody's got their head in the damn telephone or the computer or whatever the case may be. And there is a lot of bad things lurking on the other side of the line there that you just don't see and you don't know are there. So those are the type of things that people need to really 
take charge and, and learn more about. And don't don't think that okay, well I can load this piece of software on my computer and I'm set. No, you need to learn how to how to set things up, how to monitor things, keep up with things. When it comes, you know, don't think I can just get this home security system and I'm set. Hell no. You know, you need to go outside in somebody's house and they got the, the the big bushes, you know, you might as well you hide a car behind them, that type of thing. There's all sorts of things that you can look at. You know, we for instance we've done some seminars at churches and you would just go out and and do a, uh, a security check on the church and go through and looking at the, the status of the windows, the shrubbery, you know, the landscaping, all the different you know blind spots, all that sort of thing, things that people don't think about, but they should. And I very seldom saw a church that did not have at least usually one broken window somewhere. There's a crack in, crack There's in a the system. A little crack, but that's all it takes. Right, that's right. You know, and, and my church was one of them. Yeah. You saw it that day. I mean, yeah. And, uh, and I pointed it out, and it's still broken. So, but you know, you know, and, and and people really today. I'm just a finger pointer. You got to fix it. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I don't do window work, but it's it, it it's it's one of those things when people uh, like with privacy. Um, they a couple years ago, I mean, we've all heard the Edward Snowden and the data dump. You're being surveilled at all times. So your privacy is really not private. You know, when you're making a phone call, sending a text, surfing the Internet, whatever the case may be, there's a record of it. And what you say is there. Or what you text is there. That might, if you text it, it's still your words. You know, those are things that can be used against you in some way, shape, or form. It could be in a legal situation. It could be in a blackmail situation. It could be, you know, it could be in any number of things. But it's something that people don't think about. I remember years ago, you know, we had a Big Brother's watching, and a big people like, "Oh God, you know, you conspiracy theorist." Uh, and then all of a sudden, Mr. Edward Snowden comes into the picture. Um, not so crazy anymore, are we? You know what a conspiracy theory is? It <laughs> go for it. It's somebody who no longer believes the lines and 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 positions of a known and proven liar. There, there you go. You know, now. I'm not going to download on Alex Jones because he's the poster child of, and and I have no pretense of thinking he's listening. But if any of his fans are listening to this, I have nothing against the guy. He's entertaining. But you know, one of the worst crimes you can get convicted of at the federal level: conspiracy. Hmm. Now, whether or not you did it is, you know, okay, that's great. But if you were planning it, but if you were planning, if me and you conspire to commit, you know, drug trafficking, mm-hmm. oh, it's your ass. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, in the nine years I worked for the state of North Carolina, I think I saw them charge conspiracy maybe twice. And it is in our statutes. Mm-hmm. You do that at the federal level, oh, they're going, there's no telling what they're going to do to you. Right. right. You know, in some cases, you know, that the conspiracy was worse than the worse than the act. Yeah. But, you know, we've, we've morphed this in our society. You know, well, what's a conspiracy theory? Okay. Well, what exactly does that mean? You know, well, you get people like me, you know, well, you know, the pe- usually you have to look at the person who says, what's well, a conspiracy theory? If you do a little bit of background into the person who even uses that term, I'll let you draw your own conclusion. <laughs> That's right. You know, you're talking about mental midgets here. Yeah, right. You know, so uh, I'm I'm not going to get started on that not because I'll, I'll get on a tangent. And I'm, I'm not in the mood for it this week. But it just, it just, <laughs> oh, just tell me about it. We, <laughs> the conversation we had before we started oh, yeah. recording tonight. Um, it, it just it, it drives me insane to to talk to people and they have no clue. Um, I, I like with, with with the privacy thing, uh, getting out and sharing all their 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 personal stuff on social media, and it's not just you know putting posts. Oh, I did this, I did that. But every time you take a picture mm-hmm. and you put it out there, you're sharing something about you. You're sharing more than just your picture. If you're taking a picture and it's at your house. Now you've shown people stuff. There's things in the background. People, there's things people can see. You may be, they may be taking this that uh, selfie with the the pouty lips or whatever the hell it is that these people do. And in the background, there's some electronics in there in the corner. Oh, mm-hmm. you know. And these people, these five thousand friends, and I'm doing air quotes for those of you that can't see this. These five thousand friends of yours, there may be a handful of them in there that do not have your best interest at heart. Well, and, I'm a, and they're looking for something. I think you're being from. overly, you know, sympathetic on that. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to 
Well, I'm not going to be a nice guy. Don't be a dumbass. You know, it, it's weird we're having this conversation this week because on, on LinkedIn there's a, a guy that uh, that I've known through a previous life when I worked intel in the military. You know, the intelligence field, you know, I was I was a, a lab rat. But what you're looking at in, in that line of work is you're a paid liar and you're a paid thief. Hmm. You're stealing information. And anybody that comes up with this patriotic bullshit, just save your breath. I'm, I'm, I, I, I get it. I did what I, a lot of the things I did for my country, and, I, and I'm, and, and I'm glad I did. I'm proud of that. But at the same time, you're, you're stealing and you're lying for a living. That's just the way it is. Yeah, that's the whole purpose of the CIA. Yeah. You know, when you go back into the Snowden thing. Yeah. Uh, I'm not a, I'm not about to step in that minefield. Are there th- some things he's legally guilty? There's a difference in legal and factual guilt. Mm-hmm. There is a vast, vast difference in legal and factual guilt. Is he legally guilty of some things? I probably say so. Uh, and why he went to Russia? That's that's probably the last place on the planet I'd have went to if I'd have done some of the things he did. <laughs> yeah, you kind know, of paints you in a corner. You know, though. you're you know you're you're basically walking into a human taxidermy shop there. That's that was the last place I'd have went. But right. You know, you made your bed, son. Uh, but, you know, we got technology now that they can sit there on Facebook and watch you typing in real time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, they built a facility, I believe, out in Utah. Yep. That's how many millions of square feet. And it's just all data. And they actually have to have a cooling system for the servers that there's that much data that's been downloaded. You know, you go to places like London – one of the largest surveillance states, that one city on the planet. You know, there's, there's, and, and make no mistake, there's not some, some guy sitting in some building somewhere watching these cameras at all times. That's not the way this works. Yep, it's going into a database, yeah. and if they need it, they'll go find it. Absolutely. Yep. You know, so when you're looking at privacy and, and how we look at this from a, a self defense and a self protection perspective, um, uh, you kind of have to put people in a position that is very uncomfortable. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, because, number one, we live in a society where, you know, it's, it's, it's your way right away. It's the Burger King mentality. You know, it's, it's, it's delivered in 30 minutes hot, fresh, and now that's what we want. When you tell people, you know, that this is part of what you're, you know, of, of what you have to take upon yourself as a responsibility, we can't have that. Mm-hmm. You know, going back to the home alarms. Uh, I can pretty much tell you how one of those things designed just by looking at the uh, at the floor plan of the house without even setting foot in it. You know, it, it, it's it's once you learn how these people think or don't think, depending on how you look at it, uh, it's 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 a burglar's wet dream. Yeah. Uh, there even there's even evidence now that those Roombas, those mm-hmm. little vacuum cleaners. Yeah. There's some evidence now that they found a way to hack into those. No, it don't surprise me one bit. Well, what it's doing is it can tell by the way how far it travels. They're actually getting a pretty good indication of how far this thing travels, and it's telling them what the floor plan is. Mm-hmm. You know, well, at this point, you don't even need night vision goggles to break into somebody's house in the middle of the night. I mean, if you can just have a pretty good estimation of how many steps constitutes a yard, you're home free. Yeah. And if you know that thing's moving around in there, they don't have motion detectors. Right. Or- you know, so if this thing, y'all, if you've, and I don't have one, but I'm, let's just, you know, humor me. If anybody's got one and I'm, I'm full of shit here, please, by all means, tell me. But if this thing goes off at four o'clock in the morning, you well, know, or four o'clock in the afternoon when you're, you and your wife are theoretically at work. Right. There's a problem. Right. Yeah. Because now we know that we can move around in here without setting anything off. Right. Yeah. This is not anything new here. This is the way criminals think. You know, and one of the things that I, I take, you know, uh, exception to is you get a lot of these officers and and, 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 and bless them, you know, they mean well. I yeah. think a lot of these guys in law enforcement specifically mean what I'm about to say is, that, well, you got to think like a criminal. You don't have that capacity. If you, you're not a criminal. Right. You know, you may have a, a, a vast amount of experience uh, that, that can... Okay, this is what I've seen before. The problem with a criminal is they're always having to act, act, you know, and, and stay one step ahead of you. 
So thinking like a criminal and thinking as a criminal is, is, is there's two totally different concepts. And I get this from time to time. I say, well, how do you know so much? Well, according to the state of North Carolina, I am one. <laughs> so, uh, I, I, you know, there's part of my life that I've been down that route. Yeah. You know, so, but there's a vast difference. Right. Privacy, though, is a big buzzword. We both know that. Oh, yeah. You know, according to the, most of the higher courts of the land, when you step, out, step foot out in public, you have no expectation of privacy. Uh, now, they're not going to follow you in the toilet. Uh, but if you're out in public, fair game. Right. What's privacy, though? What's your working definition of privacy? Because I've got mine, it's, and mine's warped. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and tell you mine is warped. My uh, my very general um, definition of privacy would be keeping information from others. Okay, that's that's pretty much in line. On my, on my notes for the, what we were working on today, uh, Merriam-Webster, you know that thing called a dictionary nobody ever looks at anymore. Mm, right. uh, the quality or state of being apart from company or observation. Now, I could probably, that could be either you or it could be your information, right? That's correct. Seclusion. Freedom from unauthorized intrusion. There's a lot to unpack here. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to unpack here just by what we look at from a generic definition that we will find in, a, in an open source, meaning a dictionary. Being apart. You know, we don't want nude photos of ourselves being uh, put on the side of a bus in, in you know, in Richmond. Hmm. Uh, yeah. That's private. That's private. <laughs> you know, we're looking at a, a, a difference in private versus public. You've got public investigators, meaning law enforcement officers, mm -hmm. those guys that are, that are doing this, you know, on behalf of you and I, citizens. Right. And they're, they need a warrant to go into right. privacy. They're, they're investigating... Mm -hmm. On behalf of the law, and 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 when it comes down to brass tax, they're they're working on our behalf. Correct. Then you got private investigators. That's somebody that if there's something that you need looked at, then you go on a one-on-one -on -one contractual basis, pay this person a rather large sum of money, mm -hmm. and you either get a result or you don't. I've got a little bit of a different working definition of privacy. Oh boy. The amount of authorized access. Now, I, I, now, I, this was my words when I was doing show prep, so everybody bear with me. The amount of authorized access that you allow into the intimate recesses of your life and the lives of those with whom you share relationships. Now, some crossover in the, um, the Webster's Dictionary said, but l let's look at this. The key is authorized. Yeah. That's where the social media shit comes in. Oh, People, yes. Because the minute you put you authorize a glimpse into your privacy, the minute you post some shit. Well, the only thing about about social media now is it's just, it's a portal. Hmm. It's just made it faster. Yeah. You know, you go back to World War II, you know, you could look at their, you know, loose lips sink ships. Right. You saw these posters everywhere. And that came about because in places like New York, you know, there was... You know, you never knew who was a German spy. They were everywhere. Yeah. So we had to be careful. You know, you say, and, and even in today, you know, you say something to one person, you might as well set it to 10 because you can't depend upon this person to keep their mouth shut. Yeah. The only thing social media that has done is streamlined the process. <laughs> made it easier. For it's just made it easier. Your, find your stuff. Because you're going to, it is a, it is a, a human weakness. <clears throat> yeah. You know, that, that generally speaking, that's why most criminals get caught. Is you tell one guy, and then you know, of course, cats out the bag. Yeah, you know, it's it's off to the races. You know, is there such a thing as a perfect crime? There is. You just can't tell anybody. Right. So, the intimate recesses of your life or the lives of of those close to you. That's going to be the things that I really don't want anybody to know, mm -hmm. or things that could damage me. That if if the general public saw you know you know the inside of my house, all over social media, uh, or or a blog or or whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. that can cause potential damage. Yeah. Hey, we're going to play golf, uh, you know, Pebble Beach. 
We're going to be going, you know, Sunday through Wednesday. Hmm. Well, that that's open house sign. Yeah, exactly. You know, so <laughs> I mean, it's that simple. Yeah. You know. But today, but because of social media, privacy has become what what you may look at as a spider web. Mm-hmm. It used to be, you know, if we could transport ourselves back in time at fifty years ago, when my God, you had to go, you know, that thing hanging on the wall, but to make a phone call. That thing with a cord oh, hanging geez, out of it. Louis, yeah, my, it, it would only go for like ten feet. You know, Crow Magnon man here, right? <laughs> but you know now. You tell one person, you might as well have told a hundred. A million. Who knows? Yeah. You know, who knows? You know, so what you've got is you start at one small center, and now it's just gotten wider and wider and wider. And the only thing you did was you told one person. Yeah. Ten. Who knows? Uh, you can take measures to remain private all you want. Um, but here's where this starts getting ugly. Now, you don't have a Facebook account per se. Right. Right. Here's the problem. Anybody that knows something about you, mm-hmm. you're still not going to be immune from that. That's right, because they can put it out there. Well, it doesn't even have to be that, because I, I'm there's a kind of an undertone I have. You don't even know about this yet, because I haven't released it. But I'm looking at this for one specific crime tonight, and I'm going to go ahead and let the cat out of the bag. I'm looking to blackmail you. Okay. I don't necessarily have to get to you. Mm-hmm. All I've got to do is, is I just need information right. and somebody to get it to me. Yeah, a back door. Right. You know, you know, most criminals, you know, the, you know you've all, all heard to say, you know, you know, only a moron is going to break into a house in the front door in broad daylight. Well, that's the side that faces the street. You know, what goes down streets? Cars. You know, people walking a dog. Mm-hmm. If I want to break into your house. Yeah. Right. You know. Oh, it, yeah. You know. Different not, scenario. Right. You know. But when you look at, at what other people will put out there, you know, innocently. Right. I don't think anybody does a lot of this stuff on social media or, or email, phone calls. How many times have you been standing in line at a, at, a, at a restaurant waiting to be seated and you hear some fantastic, I mean, we're talking about radio dramas, people talking on the oh, phone. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, my brother, you know, now people think I'm a jerk, but, you know, my brother, he's, he, he's, he's made some of this stuff, I mean, being a, a, a public nuisance, he's taken it to an art form. <laughs> well, what he would do is he'll sit there and listen to somebody on their phone and he'll sit there and start answering the questions. Oh wow! And then all of a sudden they start getting distracted, and then it it, it gets very, rather interesting. That's funny, you know. But what they're doing is speaking volumes. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, what are we doing next week? You know, well, whatever that other person, it doesn't matter. Yeah. All I've got to do now is, is, you know, you've told me what you are, and and if you're really that clueless to not be paying attention to your surroundings, you're not going to notice me following you home. That's right. So social media is is a is a conduit right. into into invasions of privacy, but it's like I've said about the internet in in, in general, it's a lazy criminal's way. It, it's a it's a shortcut. Exactly. It, it reduces creativity. You know. So having said that, there's ways in which we can voluntarily surrender our privacy. Now, we've talked about social uh, social media. The problem with that is, though, I would argue that is is now recently this week, and I'm not going. I'm going to temper my remarks on all this this week because I haven't turned the TV on all week. We want to be transparent in our interactions with each other in the American public. Oh, it just sounds so sexy, right? That's horseshit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that well, don't happen. Yeah. You know, the Germans, in the German language, there's actually a word, it's called glass person, where you are a person that, you know, that is able to be seen. And, and in my opinion, be seen through. Okay. It means you're totally honest. You're open. Okay. Okay. 
have we not opened the door for a lot of what's happening to us innocently? Now, I'm not throwing mud on people, but innocently by saying I'm transparent. I'm an open book. How many times have you heard that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, is that such a good thing? No. That's why I'm so damn paranoid about people knowing stuff about me, because it's my business. What you don't know is probably better off, better for you. Right. It's better for me. I know that. You know, it's just like I was standing in, in line the other day. There's this big guy behind me. He was, and, and it's it's funny you mentioned it that way because this big, you know, you can always tell the types. You know, this big dude, you know, all roided out, <laughs> got the beard. Oh, the beard. Yeah. <laughs> the lumberjack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't come on my class with a beard. No. You'll you'll leave without it. <laughs> or at least a, a portion of yeah, it. It, it. It looks bad. <laughs> But yeah. but anyway, he's making these, trying to be the life of the party, and he just made the comment about coffee. I said, you know, coffee is, you know, that's for your protection, not mine. And I get this look on, on the heat, and then all of a sudden the light went off. <laughs> yeah, so it's just, you know, plant seeds and leave. Right. Uh, relationships. You know. I look at at, at an, I'm I'm looking at this from a criminal's perspective. How do I find things out about you? Now, to answer that question, we first have to understand why I want to find out things about you. Mm-hmm. Okay, it could be revenge. You no, know, ten years ago, you know, you were screwing my girlfriend. You know, and. To quote an Englishman, a, a, a patient man is a dangerous man. Right. You know, revenge is a dish best served cold. You know, you'll never see it coming. You know, his words are not mine. Sociopathology. Now, do you honestly believe that a lot of these serial rapists and serial murderers out there perusing Facebook, mm-hmm, yeah, she'll do. That's not the way that works. Right. You know, we're looking at things like, you know, it, it was a way that, you know, she was putting on her lipstick in, in, in the car next to him. And, all, and, and whatever's going on in that, in that back cave of a, of a mind and a, in a dark heart of his, it flipped that switch. Right. Who knows? You know, we've got human curiosity. Nosy people. Right. You know, generally speaking, you buy a house. There's a record of that. Right. The tax office, I can go online in the state of North Carolina right now and go to the county and find who owns a certain piece of property. And you will have people that will say, you know, well, I'm a public figure. There's a way around it. Not so fast, my friend. What people will try to do, there's in in many jurisdictions to hide, to conceal your, your, you know, your public image and, and protect your privacy. Because like here in North Carolina, you know, I'm, I doubt, you know, that, you know, I doubt Mike Krzyzewski would have his, his phone number in, in, the, in the Durham phone book. Yeah, correct. Probably not. Yeah. You know, well, what a lot of celebrities and high profile people would do on that is they'll list their house. They'll actually put it into a trust. Yep. Well, that's that's easy to find. Because a lot of them are really stupid. What they'll do is they'll list the trust in, in like their wife's maiden name. Uh, I'm not going to broadcast it how I find it, but I actually found Glenn Beck's. Oh, wow. It was, it was, and it took me about 15 minutes. Because Texas has some different laws on that, but it was, he, he had his listed in a trust, uh, listed under a historical person's name. Uh, and if you'd had ever listened to him. Enough. Enough. It was, it was pretty easy to find. Right. Um. Uh, CEOs of, of, of major, major corporations. Yes, it's, 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 it's child's play. Yeah. You just have to know where to look and how to look. They'll do a trust or they'll form an LLC or something where they try to untie their name to whatever the piece well, of property. You know, and, and in, in the big scheme of things, it probably is for privacy. And for the average Joe, they would never know about it. But a true criminal that knows mm-hmm. how, how to look and find things, you got to make it more difficult. Yeah. If you really want to hide something there are certain states where you can have all that they can make it very difficult uh, used to be 
if you had somebody, one of the most dangerous people on the planet that you can have to violate someone's privacy is somebody corrupt that works in the DMV. Yeah. You know, they're already miserable. Uh, they don't, I mean, in the big scheme of things, they don't make a whole lot of money. So you've got it in for somebody or you've got it and you walk up and say, I'm, here's five crisp $100 bills. This is what I need. I'm going to walk down here, give me a couple of donuts and a cup of coffee. I'll see you in a few minutes. Hmm. Well, that, that's a going to be a pretty good return on your investment. You know that that's and that's more not as uncommon as you believe. I can imagine. Uh, that's how a lot in the old times. That's how private investigators were so so successful. They still had those contacts inside law enforcement. You know, and you might not be able to give him money, but it's okay. Here's you know here's a round of golf on me. Yeah. But I need this. You know, it's gotten a little bit tighter. Yeah, nowadays if they try, they, there's a record of who looks up what. Right, you know. For the most part. You know, uh, I'm not going to divulge privacy. Here we go. But you know, someone pretty darn close to me has to be careful with that. Absolutely. You know, so um, blackmail. That's probably the biggie. My opinion. And, and yeah. the thing about it is, is it, it you know, it. It's getting harder to blackmail people. You know, there's there's really, you know, in a, in a nation where we've lost our morals, we've lost our soul, you know, and you lost... They put it all out there. There's I nothing mean, to blackmail you know, with I mean, anymore. Well, I mean, why, what do you want... I mean, when you're living in a nation where they're getting ready... You know, you've got certain <laughs> academics and universities saying, you know, that, that having sex with children is okay. Oh, my God. How the hell are you going to blackmail anybody with that? Oh, my God. You know, honestly. Yeah. You know... People have lost their damn mind, man. You know, okay, here's a, here's a, a picture of you, you know, sleeping with three women. I'm going to give them to your wife if you don't give me X, Y, and Z. <laughs> I don't care. So that's getting less and less of a threat. Right. The problem with it is, is it, it, you know, go through the scholarly literature, go through, do it just, do just a general search on Google and see how often these cases come up about blackmail. It's difficult. Yeah. You know, when I was going through my security process in the military, they were there. You know, you got all these privacy statements. There's that word again, privacy, right? Mm -hmm. And 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 they're not so much worried about you. They're worried about you doing something stupid on behalf of the government, right? Letting their cats out of the bag. Oh my God! It, it was yeah. you know what I went through to get that stupid clearance was, and you know I had to have it to do my job, right? They'd ask you, Quay, you know, have you ever been involved? And they actually asked this back then. Have you ever been involved in homosexual relationships? Uh, have you ever slept with married women? I mean, it was, you know, and here I am. I'm in, at that point in time, I was in my late teens, early 20s. And I mean, I'm, you know, I'm like, people actually do this shit? Yeah. You know? I thought that was only on, on the Melrose <laughs> yeah, place. Exactly, you know. And, and But, <laughs> you know, I recall one guy who they held his, his clearance up for so long because he had a, is like a second cousin that had married a woman from Iran. Yeah. Oh, my God. They they turned him every which way but loose. Yeah. You know, and, and he couldn't actually come to work with us for so because it they went down that road. You know, so um, they take it very seriously. I'd be interested in knowing now, though, when you had somebody that went from, from scratch to trying to get a, a top secret uh, sensitive compartment and information you know i'd be interested in knowing okay just how are we going to look at blackmail on this yeah yeah just my opinion and just real quick this is a little side note totally unrelated um but for any of our listeners out there if you hear a little beeping noise in the background uh, in the next room we have a smoke detector i think the battery's going bad in it and i can hear it and if you guys hear it um i apologize but that's what it is and we'll carry on <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could have some fun with this. It'd be like you know some kind of a you know Jack Bauer type of stuff. <laughs> now, looking at privacy, you know, and and some things I was I was thinking about. We were prepping today is is operationalizing this. Hmm. There was a I'm I have had the opportunity and the privilege of meeting some very interesting people throughout my career and as I was sitting there when we were talking about you know when we were making the decision okay what we're we going to talk about this week this guy came up 
And when I started in the in, in intelligence world, you know, in the military, he 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 had he had served in Vietnam, and he made a, a comment to me that always stuck with me. He said, "Son, in this business, you have no friends. Don't trust anybody." You know, and you know the the the, you know, the very people you think you can trust are the ones that'll that'll stab you in the back. Yeah, you know, so. But he told me something that always made sense, and I kind of added on to this. It's talked about when you have an adversary, somebody that means to invade your privacy. When an adversary does not know who you are or what you are doing, you don't have an adversary. Like they ain't got nothing. Well, do they even exist? True. You know, we're actually looking at, a, at an interpersonal relationship here where if you want to invade my privacy in order to do me harm, you know, we go back to what we talked about a while ago. Either you know, you're a psychopath. You know, you like the way I, I wiggle when I walk, or whatever. You saw me on on some video. Something about me attracted your attention, mm -hmm. and now you have to do some 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 intel gathering. You got to do your homework, right? To find out what makes me tick and how you can get to me. Now, if you don't have that, you may have a stalker. But eventually, a stalker is going to show their cards. Right. They have to. Yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, why stalk a woman if one day you're not going to finally cross that threshold and try to, you know, woo her or whatever it is you're going to do? Right. You have to. Okay. When an adversary knows who you are and what you do, you're burned. They got you. They've got you. Now, here's where I counsel my clients, you know, and what we've talked about in classes before, where I try to, this is where we're going when we're talking about privacy and where we want people that, that train with us and study with us. These next two is where I want you to be. You're not going to stay this gray man bullshit. Right. It don't exist. Forget it. You know, a, unless you unplug and you, you, you pay with cash and you don't ever look up you live out in the woods, you don't watch TV, to say that you're going to stay off the grid in the, in, in the modern world, you have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, you have to move to some remote island somewhere it, and feed you. It, 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 and, and, and that might be a stretch. It might be a stretch, yeah. You know, so Satellites. <laughs> your adversary may know who you are, but not what you do. Now, where I looked at this is, is you is, – look back at like a lot of the ways I have a, a, a research interest in, in the Stasi from East Germany. Mm -hmm. Probably one of the most brutal police forces has ever existed in human history. But they were masters at intelligence gathering. They were masters at information gathering and putting two and two together. You know, at present moment, there's a Stasi archive in Berlin. When the wall came down, they, they had all this stuff. There's over 15,000 bags of shredded documents on citizens, uh, dissidents. Wow. They've put together 300 of them out of 15,000 bags. You think about that. You know, we're sitting down typing out reports, you know, you know subject Glenn Snyder has seen, you know, you know, staring at the at, at, at his neighbor's wife's ass. It goes on a card, goes into a database. Mm -hmm. Well, that's somewhere now. 15,000 bags. Now, an adversary may not know what you do, or they may know what you do, but not who you are. You still got a fighting chance. Now, this is you walking around out in everyday, everyday society. Mm -hmm. You know, you What's that guy doing at the gas pump? You may not know who you are. He could probably take measures to find who you are. But if you know, if you're relatively unknown in either what you're doing and what you are, you still got a fighting chance to protect your privacy. Right. That's where, especially when we're working with CEOs, companies, they're not wired that way. They've got to be in charge. They've got to be at. The, they got to be the focus of attention. Well, the problem with that is, is you send them somewhere like, you know, to a conference in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. 
Well, they don't care that you're a, a CEO of a company in Salt Lake City, Utah. That means exactly nothing to a to a you know a, a street thug, street know, a gang member, you know, a mafia member from Russia. Yeah. All they see is a potential victim. Mm-hmm. So we try to mitigate what you're releasing and what you're putting out to the greatest degree possible. My opinion. Two, two remarks that I, I always look at on privacy, especially related to, to your personal security. There's a belief that the digital world is the greatest threat to personal security. I don't think so. It just makes it easier. Right. It just makes it easier. I think probably the greatest threat to your personal safety is human observation. People don't see what you're up to. You know, some of my pen pals. Yeah. You know. A lot of those guys that did what they did, they didn't have the benefit of Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube. They actually had to go out and do it the, the hard way. And, uh, you know, he's most vulnerable here. Right. Yep. We're not wired as humans to be on 24-7. And, and that's one thing I look at when I see a lot of – that's when, when I'm looking at YouTube, it really – I try not to watch too much of the self-defense stuff on there because, you know, well, what did she do wrong? Mm-hmm. Well, the, well, the moral question answer to that question is, is she didn't do anything wrong. You know, she was minding her own business and got jumped by someone. I understand the, the premise of what you're saying is she wasn't situationally aware. Mm-hmm. Nobody's on like that all the time. All right. But he was. That's the problem. Yeah, and that that right that is the root problem. Right? You said it exactly right. Because yep. you're on their schedule, not yours. Exactly. You know, you've heard me say this, and, and, and you get the moon pies. People are like, this, I'm not, you, you want to talk about people getting uncomfortable when you hear this. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you'll, you'll look at a person and, and say, you know, you didn't wake up with the intention this morning of being a victim. Nobody does that. But he thought about you. Yeah. You crossed his path, and that's all it took. That's all that matters. Yeah. You know, and, and, a, and a blog or two I'm, I'm looking at that is, and this is something I used to talk about in, when I was a magistrate. And it most often happened on the most unlikely complaint that I got from citizens. Care to think or care to guess what it is? Restraining orders? No. Hmm. Harassing phone calls. Ah. You know, in North Carolina, it's harassing. You know, if I, I, it's been several years since I sat in the chair, but like, if you call me repeatedly uh, after being told not to stop, or after being told to stop, with the intention of harassing, threatening, yada yada, then that's a it's a pretty low misdemeanor. You have to then infer intent on behalf of the person. Now, the fact that it's harassing, what does that tell you? How many times has it happened? Right. My definition on that is, as, as a person who made these judicial decisions was we're looking at a, a, a pattern of behavior. Right. No. I told him not to call me, and I hadn't heard from him in three months. Well, that's not harassment. Harassment is a repeated set of behaviors. Yeah, every 30 minutes, they're calling and asking stupid questions. That's harassment. Yeah. And... You know, what, well, well, sir, ma'am, what would you like me to do about this? You know, me have him, you know, would you like to take him to court? Would you like to have me have a warrant for arrest? Well, not really. I just want him to stop. <laughs> no, no, I'm not kidding. This is, I heard that if I had a nickel for every time I heard that, you know, we wouldn't need to be in business. Yeah. You and, need to wave that magic wand. Right. You know, Ting. well, I did for him. I said, there's a very easy way to stop this. Well, what's that? Change your phone number. Well, I don't. I, I shouldn't have to do that. You're exactly right. You shouldn't. But I should have the right to walk around and not have to be harassed. I agree with you 110. percent But we're not working on your schedule, as you said. Right. We're not working in your in your realm of of, of comfort, comfort, and 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 in your in your outlook on the world. Your safe space. We're working with him. <laughs> right. And right now, the fact that you're in here at two o'clock in the morning tells me that this you found this important enough that we have to deal with him not you right so you want it to stop pretty easy 
change your phone number and make sure he doesn't get it. Yeah. And it will blow your mind to know the number of people that would not do that. Okay. Nor would they take him to court. So what's your privacy worth to you? Yeah. Apparently not very much. You know, one of the things that, that, uh, that you do, you've done for years now, you'll stop and get your cup of coffee. And of course, people have all their personal mess, bills, and all kinds of personal items and stuff out on the dash of their car, mm-hmm. sitting wide open, you know, the purse wide open in the front seat. And you'll snap, you know, their ID badge hanging from the mirror, all these sort of things. It just gives information out to people that don't necessarily need to have that information. Right. Most people would not even care. 99.99% of people could would, would be totally oblivious, oblivious as it's even sitting there. But it's that one person that you got to worry about that sees it that has a use for it. You know, and, 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 and I caught a lot of flack about that, you know, when we, when we used to do that on Facebook. I don't do it much anymore because I'm, yeah, I made my point. Right. But the point being is if I do that from a teaching perspective – and you know, and, and you saw what I did. You know, is I, I you marked out all I, the personal I, information. Know, if it was an envelope, and I, I, I marked it out before I, you know, because I'm not going to do that to you. Right. But if I can find this out with a person from a person, and I have your best interest at heart, like, look, stop, don't do this. Yeah. There are ten more out there just like me who are looking at this that don't have your best interest at heart. I'm trying to teach you, hey, th- th- let's don't do this. Yeah, and that lacks in. Your privacy can have a heavy detrimental effect to your security. All right. So they are and totally that, intertwined with each one another. And that's the point. Yeah. You know, that's the whole point of this discussion is 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 crime and, 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 and violence has to have an origin. Yeah. You know, there it goes back into the law. You know, you look at the vast majority of crimes we have, intent. You know, did break and enter, you know, this the, the home of Lynn Snyder with the, in, with the intent to commit a felony or larceny therein. Felony breaking and entering in our state. Mm-hmm. Well, part of that, you know, what we had to prove when a law enforcement officer came to me as a magistrate, he had to provide evidence that this person, before you even broke in, you had the intent to do one of those two things once you came in your home. So we kind of actually have to infer what this person's doing. Yeah. Get the profile. No. Funny, oh, oh God, funny story about that. This happened to me one time. I was in the military. Now, I'm, I'm going to, there's going to be a language alert here, but you have to hear this word to get the whole context of the conversation. Right after 9-11, I was up in New York. You know, we had, this was about six, eight months. I was up in Albany. I was doing security up at the uh, nuclear reactor where they train a lot of the guys who work on the uh, reactors on submarines. I was doing security around that area. Woke up one morning. I'm looking. It's kind of a hazy morning. You know, it's been raining. Look out. There's this guy walking around looking in cars. Now, you see that? What do you think? What's this guy up to? Yeah. All right. Okay. So, just so we've established that, so I call down the front desk. Hey, there's a guy out here. Gave him a description. Might want to call the police. Well, they knew me because I'm sitting here. I'm in the military, and I, at that point in time, I was I had a badge on. Right. Well, about 30 minutes later, I'm looking out, and he's doing it again. So I called the police myself, and I met him downstairs. And the officer had the audacity to look at me. He said, he asked me what was going on. So well, he was walking around all, all these different cars out here looking at him. He said, well, what's strange about that? I said, the one he was looking at is my fucking car. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't question me. You know, you know, I'm and you talk about, you know, uh, the the king of stupid questions. Right. Right. But we're looking at what does not fit what's abnormal. Right. You know, was it the officer's fault? Absolutely not. It's just, you know, hey, you, you asked a dumb question. Right. Just go figure out what's going on. With right. You. You know, and of course, by the time they get there, you know the old, the you know the the cliche by that he's gone. You know, of course. But you know, my car, anybody else's, I don't want to see nobody go through that. Right. But you know, but don't be a snot nosed jerk to me about that. You know, but you're looking at privacy. When I used to be in the old days, you know, 
the CD, the CD wallets. Mm-hmm. How many people got those ripped off? Oh yeah. You know something I'm looking at this week. Spoiler alert for the blog about memes. We tend to think of memes as these funny little cat pictures you see on Facebook. Oh well, no no no, that's not what a true meme in the in the traditional sense of the English language is. But they speak volumes. I'll give you an example. If you're riding down the road and you see a sticker on the back window of a, of a pickup truck, mm-hmm. and it's you know it says kicker, right, or or one of those little oval ones that says five point five six. Now, what assumptions are you drawing? That that guy is a gun guy. Okay, and and what likely are you going and 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 whether or not it's there is irrelevant. What other infer- inferences are you going to draw about what may or may not be in that truck? A weapon. Right. Now, are we going to assume that in all cases he takes it out with him and let's just uh, let's let's go down this hole? He stops at uh at the bank. Mm-hmm. Can't take it in the bank. Can't take it in it. So now, what do we have? A pretty good idea of what's in that vehicle. There's a firearm. Right. Now. Do you have a right to express yourself? Absolutely. But now, what kind of information have you given the people going down a, down an interstate highway about you? Yeah. You know, even things like, uh, you know, you know, Buck Two State alumni. Mm-hmm. Do you realize what those people would divulge about you if you call them? These alumni associations. Oh yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. You know. I've tried to run from them and can't. You know, they've the last time I spoke to any of those people from my, from my bachelor's degree was about about 15 years ago. And when I moved, I never updated my my information. They found me. Damn social media. I, I mean, <laughs> but yeah, I got you. You know, you're looking at a university there with you know with millions or at least hundreds of thousands of alumni. Right. And you were able to find me, and I live literally in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. You had to go looking for that. Now, in full disclosure, do I have stickers on my vehicle? Yes, I do. I'm, I'm just like you. I'm a human being. I like to, I like to live life and have fun. But you just got to understand that little things tell people a lot about you. Right. They can be like advertisements. Right. That's why I said kicker a minute ago. You know, guys just run around the, you know, they're basically advertising exactly what kind of electronics are in their vehicle. Right. You know, or you'll have X sports team on there, uh, you know, the Knights or whoever the local, the local team may be. Well, now you just told me that you've got a kid that plays on that team. I know where to find, I know where to find you. If I need you, you're going to be at practice on uh Tuesday evening or the ball game that Friday night. Well, I also know where you're not going to be at. That's right. I mean, it's those little things that people don't think about. And when you tell people that, oh, you're just, you're, you're kind of crazy. Okay, I'll take that. Well, you know, but I won't be the one, uh, you know, come home with my shit gone. You know, and it, and what we try to avoid with our clients mm-hmm. and, and with, with students in general, we don't want to create people that are paranoid. Right. You know. Aware. Aware. You know, but I, I'm even at a point now, you know, like I said, you know, most of I mean, I, with my neighbors, we all are very tight knit. You know, if somebody, you know, we finally had to, it is, it's now commonplace, but, you know, if, if somebody from UPS came to my house, I knew about it. You know, I don't need a burglar alarm. My next door neighbor was a, that, that, God bless her, she's nosy. But that's to my advantage. Well, you see my situation. Right. I'm surrounded by all in-laws. Right. I'm the outlaw. You know. And they look at and I'll know if anybody even comes up the driveway, I'll get a phone call. Yeah, you know, I know at all times when there's people around. You know, because there's always somebody looking out. That's a good thing. That's an awesome thing. Yeah. And and my wife it trying to it kind of drives her nuts because on, on one side of us we got an older gentleman, he's he's retired. And he takes it upon himself and he's you know, he's kind of the, the night watch, day watch, and, you know, all the time watch. <laughs> yeah. You know, God bless him. Exactly. You know, and she's like, well, this this is getting annoying. I, I agree. You know, I don't need to know every time, you know, that, you know, 
you know, my flag got wrapped around the pole on the garage. I, I get it. But it's that one time that you need him to be there. Exactly. You'll, be, you'll, you'll hope he's there. You know, outside of my nosy neighbors and, you know, and, you know, I actually woke up one morning, there's a deer standing in my yard. You know, we know who's supposed to be there and who's not. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't, we, you know, yes, is it, is it wise to have security and stuff? Absolutely. If that's what makes you sleep better at night, you know, why not? You know, what what's a security system cost now? A month. Uh, 30 to 40 bucks monitoring the yeah, month. Great. Yeah. You know, my, my idea on that, though, is, you know, as an AK-47, you know, with several thousand rounds of ammunition, that's a one-time purchase. You don't have to worry about all that. <laughs> yeah, and not that I would ever condone that. You know, you get a backhoe and a shovel, you're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're we're going to get shut down from this. <laughs> we're getting a, a phone yeah, call. It's a joke, people. But, uh, but privacy, yeah. it, it's a whole lot easier to maintain privacy where we live. Then, you know, I, I owned a townhouse one time, and honestly, I miss it. it was, there's something to be said about going home and not having to mow the yard. <sighs> yeah. I can only dream. Oh, that was fantastic. <laughs> the problem with it was is I always had a neighbor right across the wall. Yeah. And, and, you know, and they were they were wonderful people. It's just the fact of everybody's close. You know, knowing you're sitting there on the couch and 18 inches behind you, they were doing the same thing you were. You know, so you had to take privacy it was it was it was environmental yeah it was situational no yeah see how we're good at tying that in that's right privacy or lack thereof is a gateway that's what we're looking at you know it's it's a gateway drug right Mm -hmm. you know it's a gateway into affecting your security but ladies and gentlemen you you control this that's just the way it is you know you, you, it's kind of hard to complain when you release all this. Well, I didn't know this. Yeah, you know, when you told them you were going to be in the Bahamas and you came back and the only thing left in your house was the carpet and the drapes, you kind of open yourself up for that. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, so loose lips sink ships. Hmm. And then some. Dude, that was, I enjoyed that one tonight. Yep. And we could probably go for another three or four hours with that one. Oh. But it's... It, it's amazing, and, and we really want people to, you know, again, like I said at the end of every podcast, we want people to think, listen to what we say, whether you totally agree with us or not, that's irrelevant, but if it makes you think, step out of your comfort zone, look at things in a different way, then we've done our job. We've done exactly what we set out to do. If it pisses you off a little bit, that's fine too, you know, but if you learn something, you better yourself, or you can protect yourself from it. Then hey, we've done exactly what we set out to do. But uh, this uh, the beeping in the next room. I- I'm going to get my gun in a minute because mm-hmm. I'm getting ready to take that thing out. <laughs> so, uh, I hopefully it don't show. Uh, you know, come out on the recording too bad. First episode of twenty four. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but uh, until next time, you guys. Uh, again, in the meantime, come visit us on the web www.mysterydefense.us. Check out all of our links, all of our you know, all of our stuff. And uh, join in the conversation and share what you got with us. But until next time, uh, I'm Glenn Snyder with Corbett Average. You guys be safe. We'll see you all next week. Everybody take care.